Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Phoenix Wright It's Return Just for All. In the previous episode, we continue our investigations, talk to Matt Ungard, and then I'm guessing this should be another personality. If not, this is the real Matt Ungard himself. If you're happy with this episode, as for the last investigation of today, make sure that like button is hit that like button and it's much greatly appreciate the channel. Talk. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much fate and as much information as you have. You really So you were Shelly the killer's client. You don't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, do you? What do you mean? And that woman? Adrian was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me? I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that one is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? That's... You're lying. What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you have to hide the video camera and... A weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrew's secret. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. <laughs> they turn their clients into cash cows by holding their sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me? How much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And, and that's why... Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something like so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up and I can. Good enough an answer for you, little girl. <clears throat> Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corrida? Because he was about to sling so much dug onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This, this, this is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corrida had been able to give it, then Mr. Angard's secret would have... Ah, uh, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Corda ended up dead? Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, how and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me. Matt on guard. Oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've got grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed one Corda. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. And that's where I, was, I stated like in the previous episode. Cl as clear as day, he asked if he killed anyone. He says no. Proof. He did not singly handedly kill anyone. It was through a th a s another party. The person who did the killing was that the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cabinet in my room. You, you, you killed Mr. Corda. <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Ah, <sighs> oh, but too bad you can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You can always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Ah, oh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test the killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. 
You can end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. Y you scoundrel! So if I were you, Mr. Wright Esquire, I think I would give it give it all give it give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I'll get you for this. That's such a cliche phrase. One said something just like that in memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how well things turn out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya... What am I supposed to do? And now... Now you finally found it. A starting line of the case. Edgeworth! I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Wow. Well, right. what are you going to do if you plan on changing your defense? No! We can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth? Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right? It's your turn. My turn? What is the thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer and you must find it on your own. I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who is clearly a clear killer? Matt Ungar, that man is really... <sighs> it doesn't matter who, every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. It's so not the basis of our judicial system. Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly, blindly gets a quieto through shouting and trickery? Ironic that you, you of all people should say such a thing. Is it not exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Uh... Well, that may be true, but... But that's... That's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard in a quieto, that isn't a proper defense at all! I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. Right, where'd you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone. That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You are a defense lawyer. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People, people like you and Franziska von Kammer are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, and even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict. For a man, I clearly know to be guilty. Franziska. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And? Is that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You are so petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What do you... Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. Eh? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then why? Why are you here now? Uh, the answer to that is something you will find out of your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story.
Yes, you need the transceiver. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Well then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my, what is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Ma Mr. Ungard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself! I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Yeah? This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck it is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take a great care to ensure that no suspicion falls under my, my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations, and it is part of the assassin's duty. An, an assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney. And to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before. However, you did, but... My name is The Killer. Shelly The Killer. You're Shelly The Killer? Please keep in mind, you do not have much space to maneuver with me. Also, I did the, as a the killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain... Maya! It would be my duty as an assessor to see to it she receives a nice long nap. No! Now then, if you'll excuse me. If someone were to trace this signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Mystic Maya! I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Huh? Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission? Huh? Oh, that? It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be! That cat, can it? What is it? I think I know where Shelly the Killer is holding Maya hostage! Edgeworth, have a police unit's head for Miss- for Vanguard Mansion immediately! Alright, you hurry over as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah. Next up, the Ungard Mansion. But well, we have to go through a lot of places to go to there first. Next, uh, living room. Did the bear move? Maya. Please answer us, Mystic Maya. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. He he and Ungard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Okay, that that freaking bear looks out of place. I was not there before. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. But there are a lot of cats in for some reason. Figurine added to the core record. A bear? Is that a more of a thing for Mr. Corda? Why would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, I'm sure that's for a shoe. Do you think this came through that little door? <sighs> the store! It's locked! Well, I'm pretty sh used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Ah, there's no one here. From the looks of this room, you know, I would say this is Ungard's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck. Deck or desk? If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it will have the moment of crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No! But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. 
So what? Can we just look for something else? It's on guard's computer. Maya, why c couldn't you have used this to get help? Mr. Nick, where's where's the power switch? Oh, I get it. So that's what happened. She couldn't find the power switch. I don't know where the power switch is at. Again? Okay, can we get a zoom in so I can get a further closer look at this? This? Again! Same thing! What power switch? I hear something speakers speak a little bit larger I'm sure if Maya saw this, she'd say, I would die ahead- No! We're not thinking this right now. No! Water is spacious so- f Why am I clicking the sofa? What's this? I think we have the labels, but this is a very large collection of videotapes. Looks like Angar taped all of his shows. It's a VCR and an antenna. The footage that the spy camera took on the scene of the crime was beamed here and recorded on the tape. Okay, let's get on out of here because I couldn't find the switch. Wine cellar? Alrighty. <clears throat> we searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be our pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Examine that? Not move. Back. What is that? This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. With love, Celeste. Miss Impacts? You mean... Yes. Mr. Corridor's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impacts be in Mr. Angard's mansion? And why does it say with love? Hmm, this might be a clue. Ah! What's wrong? Please, let me see that picture frame. Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back! Maya! It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get Angard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but... I don't think I have a lot of time left. Pearly, you're you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. That's I, no, Mystic Maya. Right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We searched the house, and there's this is the last room it looked like he eluded us. Edgeworth? Yes. As far as clues go, I think this is about about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Miss Andrew's psych lock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding, then I think I could stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. Alrighty then, we just straight into that. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews. I have come to remove your psych lock. Psych lock? I want to know, and you will tell me, your secret. Fine, go ahead, try to break me if you can. 
All right. Take that. Why frame him? Hint, hint, wink. Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ongar for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Ongar. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge out of Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by dependent on another person. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Nope! That's not that idea. Well, we can get it back. I thought it was a portrait, but no. This is only one thinking, thinking, thinking cyclo. Come on now. There's something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Take that. There you go. I was taking the portrait first. Celeste, there's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings and even revenge. And that is Miss Impact's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ungard, it would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impact and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? And that's where we show the evidence. Take that! This... This is a photo of Miss Impact, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. With love? With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impact's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's alright. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ungard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Ah, <sighs> full hate. Okay, why frame him? Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corda didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. Because of Mr. Ongard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Uh, re refresh me. Refresh my memory, why? Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at that time. I was working part-time back then and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible! Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste and her kindness move over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him. Even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. The night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan's called called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see, so that's what happened. But, then why did Mr. Corda have to call off the wedding? 
I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts! That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm also certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds and... So that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt. It would be especially damaging to us, refreshing like a spring breeze image. Any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge? There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. And at a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was at the press conference after the stage show. I knew all about it because I heard it from Juan. It was so I could find out about all, about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murder was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another after all. As for me, I was practically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I had air. I even brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed one spot with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your th time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation, or with what I know now. And with that, we're Antiques episode right here, ladies and gentlemen. Like, comment, subscribe. This is TV, and I'm signing out.